led to changes that could hardly have been foreseen. The multifaceted developments permeated and changed society in innumerable ways. Like a stone hitting a pond, a pond, these changes expanded throughout the world. The idea of this single vehicle initiated the creation of vast industries and a social revolution. This discovery and others, directly associated with the cycle's ride through history, were plainly responsible for the development of practical automobiles, motorcycles, airplanes, and many other types of transport. Huge manufactories developed within the cycle industry and because of it. In terms of social change, the bicycle directly helped in the reduction of socioeconomic barriers. The freedom of movement is, it afforded cannot be underestimated. The good roads movement and the resultant expansion of roads blossomed, which helped revolutionize the world. The images that I've se selected uh, will, <laughs> through ephemera, be ephemera, commercial, invention, legal, manufacturing, military, social, sports, transport and the liberation of women. Um, I will present examples of cycling ephemera that will illustrate these important developments in order to follow the cycle's growth from the genesis of its invention. As a collector, one finds the use of less than one hour's time 
a limiting factor in sharing a history I have found fascinating for over 50 years. I do want to tell you, you've got 3D glasses and inclusive of myself, because of macular degeneration, some people may not see at the end, there's nine or 10 images at the end, in 3D. You may not see them in 3D. Don't be disturbed by it. We're all affected at times. So here, here we have this is an 18th century example from the London magazine of a pedomotive vehicle. And in the textual description, they're looking for a machine that replaces transport without the use of horses. Now here was the first, uh, this was called the Dresien. And this was invented by a gentleman by the name of Baron von Dreis who lived in Mannheim in Germany. Um, they're having the 200th anniversary this year for the, for the anniversary of his invention, and I'll be there amongst other friends. Uh, you'll note that he's walking the vehicle. He's steering it, There's uh, and he's contained, but he has free movement of the front wheel. And that was, that was his invention, and that's the vehicle that changed the world. Previous to that, there were three and four wheel vehicles. This is an amazing, uh, naive, or primitive piece of art. This was acquired about three years ago, and there was an article written in an English uh, historical magazine about this. Again, obviously there's two women, but th of the known images, be they in print or art, and the art is very rare, all of them are static. This is the first known image of showing a woman in motion on a bicycle. It's highly important. I hope you enjoy it. It's done in Coventry. The information was there, and it, the whole place, the smokestacks of the factories, and the type of tree has all been identified. If anybody wishes further information on it, I'd be pleased to share. And this is a Scientific American from 1848. You can start to see in an ephemeral manner it's covered, but the use of pedomotive or manumotive in this case, transport. So you see people are starting to work towards getting uh, the feeling of replacing uh, horses. Now this is a daguerreotype. Dr. Rowe gave a wonderful ex examples of This is about 1849. There's levers here, obviously. They were attached to the, to the rear wheel. And there you have, this is an American image, daguerreotype about um, showing transportation, a very proud child. It's also hand colored, the, and the cheeks are hand colored, the hands are hand colored. It's an important historical cycling image. Now, I've started to title these the rapid pace forward. One, when we're afforded the opportunity to speak in a group like this, we cannot go into the detailed history. It's any image could be talked about for an hour. So what I've done is I've selected, and I will tell you what they are, the images of various different vehicles, but I'd like you to conceptualize that these were not considered odd or unusual. These were just vehicles that were there. People were trying to create uh, methods of transport. So this is a quadricycle. It's English. and. It's a cart that is 18, about 1862. Here is what they call the Rantoon, also developed in England. Here's the original patent document, and all these images are items of my collection. This is with the original 
wax seal and it comes in a case and that's a carpet disease, but that object is quite large. And that's important because you're starting to see treadle-driven machines, hand and treadle also, and steering in multiple uh, different manners. So here in a, is an American patent. It was the first patent in the world taken out for pedals on the front wheel. And that was done by a Frenchman by the name of Pierre Lallemont, and he did it in the United States and in Connecticut. That's called a serpent pattern philosophy, and uh, now you start to have free movement, control, and the bicycle then develop as a very popular and uh, workable item from this, from the Lamont's invention on. This here is a girl in Chicago, Jenny Durkee, and she's wearing bloomers. And this is, uh, although bloomers were invented earlier, this is the first use of bloomers with bicycles. And this is part of the change in, uh, with females and the use of the what happened with females and how they changed um, in, in, in society. So regarding women in cycling, in front of a woman stood a vehicle which they could realistically imagine opening a whole new world of freedom. They saw this at the vaudevilles in the theater. The cycle facilitated a choice of movement and a venue for social change. The cycle initiated changes to practical, unrestricted, comfortable clothing and fashion. And Susan B. Anthony is quoted as saying, and I saw her papers at the Smithsonian, let me tell you what I think of bicycling. I think it has done more to emancipate women than anything else in the world. It gives women women a feeling of freedom and self-reliance. I stand and rejoice every time I see a woman ride by on a wheel. The picture of free, untrammeled womanhood. So before you had a very heavy bicycle, the wheel started to get bigger and it started to get tubing instead of solid backbone, so the vehicle became lighter. And one, I'm often asked why the, why the wheel got bigger. It was if you had something the size of a dollar and it revolved once, it went four inches. If you had it a foot in diameter, it went five times one foot. If it was four foot in diameter, it was five times four. There was no gearing, and that's why uh, the wheel got bigger. Now that's a, that's a monocycle, that might answer the question. These actually ex exist, I've seen them. There's a, there's a museum in Saint Etienne in uh, France, the Musée d'Industry actually has some monocycles in their collection, contemporary from, the, from that period. And this, this photograph was taken in Birmingham, England. And again, this is all the different vehicles that were out and about. Now this is called an auto dicycle, and that's a two-wheel. These other wheels are drive change, drive change wheels, but this and this are sideways two-wheel bicycle. It's belt driven, and there was a tr little trailer here that would keep you from falling backwards. That's, this is a highly unusual vehicle. It's called a dos a dos, back to back. Dos a dos is French, it's English about 1877. It was built in Coventry. There's the weavers. And here he's got a bugle. Here, sorry, there's the bugle. And what they did when they were out cycling, if they were coming towards people, they would uh, use different sounds. When the cycle clubs used the bugles, 
they use the exact same trumpeting sounds as the cavalry. <laughs> and this, this is an amazing image. This is, um, this is a rowing, rowing machine mechanism, all with wires and, and looping. It's four wheels. So there's a big wheel there at the side, another one on the other side, one in the front, one in the back, and she rowed. It's not an invalid vehicle. It was a commercial vehicle. So you start to see these things. Their people are developing things. Now, I have to read this. This gentleman's on a, on a rare bike. It's called an Action Ordinary. And it's geared there. So it's a very fine instrument, uh, mechanical instrument. And here's what he said. I attribute my success to the fact that all my life I have never used alcohol in any form. I've never touched tobacco. I go to bed at 10 o'clock every night and no monkey business. <laughs> Sadly. Um, in the mid-1880s, you started to get the bicycle with a chain and with in the form that we see it today. This was what we call, what they were calling at the time, the safety bicycle. This was done, uh, and it's not formed exactly yet, but now you've got the standard pattern bicycle forming very rapidly. Now, <coughs> This was at the same time. This was built, uh, a guy by the H.S. Owen, Dart Cycle Company, in uh, Washington, D.C. This was a lady cycling group. And these, one of these bicycles was actually on display at the time in the Smithsonian Institution in 1893. And um, then they, they gave it back to the owners. And uh, when I was there, I asked them to trace the bike because all I could find was the photograph in a catalog of these bicycles on display. But I couldn't find out where it went. I thought they still had it hidden. And they did all the tracing for them, but they, they couldn't find it. So it got, but they found the note. It went back to the, to the people. So now you've got in, in society, You've got this standard style frame, and he's got a pneumatic safety. So, but in 1888, you'll see a document later. Uh, you've got the pneumatic tire that was reinvented by John Boyd Dunlop. But now you've got standard size, standard types of bicycles that men and women can drive. No longer the high wheel that was dangerous because they would flip on it. This is what the pneumatic tire and the diamond frame with pedals and steering is what caused the absolute pure boom of the 1890s. Now, technology reigns. Everybody who drives a car here has a differential in the car. That differential was invented by a guy by the name of James Starley in 1878, and he took out a patent for it. There was, this is out of the abridgments, there's a drawing of it, and there's an example of, the start of, of a Starley tricycle, so with a differential gear. Here's the patent uh, document issued by the United Kingdom patent office for Dunlop's pneumatic tire. But Dunlop never invented the pneumatic tire. It was done, I think, in 1842 by a guy by the name of Thompson. Patent, uh, Dunlop's patent was nullified, and he made his money in buying up two inventions, one for a valve and one for a bicycle tire, somebody else's tire. But that's the initial patent that he was granted from the British Patent Office. Here's an American invention, which is the other part of your car that you can't do without, 
that was invented by a bicycle person, and that's the ball joint suspension up here. Every, every car has a ball joint suspension. Every, um, it was invented by a guy by the name of Sterling Elliott in 1890. And that's an original catalog. So then you've got people starting to develop automobiles. So you have a steam-driven tricycle here. He's got a, a rod attaching it to a, another tricycle. He's just showing you how he pulled it. And this, this is a French image, circa 1885. The bicycle led to the motorcycle. This here is a steam-driven star. It, this was uh, a guy by the name of Copeland um, put these steam engines on the stars and um, the Smithsonian has a picture, but part of this exists, but here's your first American motorcycle. And here's a snowmobile. So this is an Indian motorcycle about 1909. And uh, here's a little dog, and there you've got a, a motorcycle converted to a, to make a snowmobile. And here we have the attempted aircraft. <laughs> now, I never found out what this was really about, but there's a bunch of prizes there. So, but, but it is a, an early photograph. I used to think that this was black painted in, it's not, it's trees in the background. So it's a complete original contemporary photograph maybe late 1890s. And you can see, obviously see the relationship of the bicycle to the, to the development of air travel and the Wright brothers name doesn't need to be carried further. So in dealing with ephemera, this is a really exciting story for me. Um, I had the next picture in my collection. I had it and I took to a, a conference in 12 years ago in California, and I had an expert look at it. We were trying to prove that this was the first uh, high wheel bicycle made in America. And all we could prove was that it was an early high American made high wheel bicycle. About, I had that 10, 12 years, uh, but a few years ago, I bought this on eBay, and it identifies the vehicle James Wall with first high wheel bicycle made in America and it identifies the guy as owned by uh, I, I can't read from here but so in, in having that picture if you look at his face and this picture I was able to, to do the research and came up and I have a 12-page article on the first high-wheel bicycles commercially made in the United States of America. So that's what ephemera can do. You can put pieces together of your puzzle. And this is some examples. This is Pope Columbia. He became the magnate. He bought uh, with his patent attorney, or his patent attorney by the name of Charles Pratt, working for him, bought as many of the early patents as he could to control the American bicycle industry. He did that, but this is when he started, you know, about 1876, he saw bicycles on display at the Philadelphia Centennial, started to import bikes from the United States, had the wheat sewing machine company uh, make the parts for him. Here's a trade card from, from Weed. And there's the use of the same big net over here. Um, in, in Pope's catalog. And there's a Scientific American of cover of, on the cover of Pope's manufactory at the Weed Sewing Machine Company. It became weed was huge, and Pope wound up buying the weed sewing machine company. And here's another example of how the bicycle permeated throughout American industry. Here you have the John, John Deere bicycles. That's John Deere Plow Company that we're all 
familiar with. What happened in the United States is all of a sudden there were bicycle, there were factories building chains and pedals and handlebars and stems and everything. But then you had other factories that people could go and buy uh, the frames and forks from. So all of a sudden you had hundreds and hundreds of factories throughout the United States building bicycles so they didn't have to build anything. They could just assemble. So you see these little factories in small towns with images on their catalogs of factories bigger than this here hotel that we're at right now. It was quite interesting. So uh, that's tube and stamping. So there's an example. This will give you some idea of the size of the industry. This is um, in uh, Nottingham, England. This is the Raleigh Bicycle Factory. This is just one of the assembly stations. Uh, this here is Mechanics Hall in San Francisco. This is a... Yeah. It's, a, it's Mark Helios, which, sorry, here it's Mark Helios. That's Moybridge. It's a Moybridge photo, and it's got the holy grail of, of anything. It's got a beautiful signage for ephemeral reasons. It would be wonderful to get it. This was also used in a stereoscopic car. But the, this is 1869. So, what do we collect? Well, when we're ephemeral, some of us collect anything we can. This was, there were no um, bits of information. You had maps, but they weren't gradient, and they had no relevant information to them. So this is an Ixian Bicycle Riding Society. It was just one bicycle club. And these guys would go out on rides and then take and keep the information from that jaunt. And then they would bring that back, and somebody else wanted it, they would have access to that uh, ride, the information on that ride. And there was, there's, I think, 24 different rides in this particular archive. But these are the, these are the precursors of the road guides that develop because of <coughs> cycling and cyclists. So in, in Boston, in 1910, this was the first ride of the first bicycle club in the United States. It's the Boston Bicycle Club. It's identified in May, I think May, May 30th, I think, I'm not really sure. Oh, March, March 30th, 1878. It's a highly important image, and it shows American cycling history. And because of that, many bicycle clubs formed, but then it was, the, then it, the Boston Bicycle Club was one of the premier organizers of the first meet of the League of American Wheelmen. So here's the League of American Wheelmen. This is a little, little, little pamphlet that they produced, that's all the pages. And that was in May the 30th, 1880 in Newport, Rhode Island, and the LAW eventually became the AAA, and in Canada, the CAA, it's, uh, and it's got little notations, so you'll see some other LAW material. So this here, uh, you start, the bicycle became, uh, started to become very involved in sports and sporting. The first organized race in the United States held by the New York Athletic Club was at Gilmore Gardens in New York City. And there's an ephemeral thing, if I can pick it up, I'll show it to you. Uh, you're not going to be able to see it, but in through here on the original, on the original um, magazine is the lines from the different boxwood pieces of wood that were used to make the cutout to make the print. Now you start to see the classes, social class, 
and young fellows becoming involved in sport. So this is the Harvard Bicycle Club. And uh, that's a, a membership certificate to the HBC. Then you had uh, a guy by the name of George M. Handy, who is the amateur bicycle champion of America. And in Springfield, Massachusetts, um, he, he did a lot of his racing. Springfield has his collection of medals at a library. And uh, he was the guy who started Handy Motorcycles, which, uh, Handy Bicycles, which became the Indian Motorcycle Company. And most people know of Indian Motorcycle. There's your direct link. To it. So bicycling and sport bicycling became the biggest spectator sports in the United States and around the world. And this is in Springfield in 1893 to get some perspective of the crowds that they would get. This is in front of the White House when you've got two people side by side, it's called a sociable. So you've got a sociable, a sociable tricycle, you've got a, a, obviously a single, and you've got some nice to see the, the little kids there, so. So now you've got society and business this is on uh, Martha's Vineyard, Wilson's Cycles, and um, there was a, a tricycle rental and bicycle rental. Almost all these, there's one bicycle, all these are various different types of tricycles that were used. And in the early 1880s, there were more tricycles sold than there were bicycles because they were much safer and you didn't tip over. So there's an example of some cycling on Martha's Vineyard. Well, the Good Roads Movement progressed. The League of American Wheelmen, that was their man, one of their main mandates was Good Roads. And I, so I included the, the magazine cover and inside page, but there's a picture of Santa I thought you'd enjoy taking a look at what Santa looked like when he wasn't heavy with a big jolly nose. So that's 1892. The rails, everybody knows, went right across North America. But there were, in many cases, there weren't even roads between towns. There were some, but the roads were never even remotely maintained. They were just tracks, dirt tracks. They weren't suitable to uh, common transport. Well, here's a guy. He's got this wheel. It's got a, a balancing system, and he could ride the rails. And if you take a look, it's the original contemporary script, Harry on his way to work. <laughs> and, and that was common. And there's part of your Good Roads movement. That's about 1910. That's what people were traveling on through a lot of, a lot of the world. We take for granted the roads and the highways that we are on. So the emancipation of women and um, the humorous uh, stereoscopic cards and other commentary was uh, pretty common. Um, so there you have, uh, she's wearing bloomers and she's telling her husband uh, what instructions to follow while she goes out for a ride. At the end of this, the nine stereoscopic cards, or ten stereoscopic cards, are of emancipated women, I hope. <laughs> so here's a group ride, and you can see a woman in her uh, bloomer types and others. But if you take a look at the hats and the fashion and the men in the background, it's a very nice social scene. You start to see the bicycle on the roads permeating society. And here's the really one of my favorite images. To, to each her own. You know, you've got you've got grandma just painfully sitting there, and you've got a proudly the daughter, the granddaughter on her, with her vehicle, and she's just good to go. 
So this one is a, a men's social scene. This exploded. This is in Atlanta. And it reads, the second Sunday run of the improved order of cork pullers. <laughs> <laughs> August, I think, 1895. And this is, this is another club. This is social. And this is Homer, New York. And this lady here is a colored lady. And, and uh, there's some odd and unusual bicycles in there. But it was the acceptance and social history that these clubs just blossomed throughout, throughout the world. And the United States was, was very advanced in that, but so, so was England, Canada, many other countries. Now, this is pretty unusual. We tend to think of bicycles within uh, our own rural societies, but there's uh, an example of a Native American Indian with a bicycle within his proximity. I can't tell you whether it's his or not, but it's interesting to see that in that scene. This is a bear skin. So it, it just shows you the, where the bicycle cramp moved to. Now, the, the bicycle was also heavily used in war. This is the uh, I think that's a camera. Yeah, it's Cameron Highlanders, which were English, on their way to Khartoum in 1898. And uh, anybody want a prize, free dinner? Guess where that was taken? <laughs> Nobody won. So this, this is an amazing piece of ephemera. This is showing the use of the bicycle in war. This is at Math King, which was one of the battles um, in the Boer War. And what's amazing, that's where Baden Powell was the commander, the guy who originated the Boy Scouts. And they were having bicycle races and social, so that whole column there, the whole center column was on the bicycle races. They were holding while they were under siege. And if you take a look at the dark paper, I've seen other examples of that. Uh, and there were different kinds of paper because they were just scooping any, like they did in the Civil War in the southern states. They were using any papers that they could get a hold of. And here's a, a bicycle used in an ambulance. They actually used these in the Japanese-Russian War, but they were used throughout Europe and I'm sure many other countries. It's the Red Cross. Now here's uh, ultra early proof of commerce and the first bicycles imported into the United States. This is, um, there was a hobby horse print that one of the other gentlemen showed and it went through rapidly. That was in one of the other, it was in color. That was Johnson's Hobby Horse Riding School from April of 1819. Well, his son, Johnson's son, came to America, and this is the ad for him selling bicycles in New York City. So you've got the importation of bicycles in 1819 into America. This is a wonderful object, and it's about 1868. It's a game board. The velocity with the pedals was more or less invented. More or less. There's much more to discuss about. About 1865, 66. Here you've got the importance of a, a bicycle showing up in this is about 1868 showing up with prominence with the balloon, the ship, the horse, and the railroad. It's quite an attractive document. And because it shows the world, it shows the, the transference of the technology of the bicycle. Yes, that's French. So this is the mono pattern velocity. This is in 1869. This was in New York City. That's, this is a catalog sheet from Minot, and Mercer Minot was the name of the company. 
but they use the exact same big net for some velocity and sheet music. And this, um, you know, the printing and industry, because of bicycling, many bicycle journals, posters, etc. So this is the first journal published on velocipedes in the world. And it's actually only stopped printing for a short while because of the Franco-Prussian War. And here's, this is two bound journals of, of the Velocity to Illustrate. It's an important document. This is called a zeotrope. And I think uh, most of us know that this, when, when this was revolving, it looked like the pedals were revolving and the man was traveling forward. And this is a Courier Knife print. And this here scene, you'll see later in a, uh, in another, in a Courier Knife's trade card. But they didn't take all this seriously. A lot of people think that, and, but I think we know, we know better, but it wasn't all serious stuff. This is, uh, there was a lo lot of humor and advertising and development. And the bicycle was important and it came up in a, a lot of advertising and graphics. This is about, eight, in, this is 1880. And this is a nice piece of ephemera from New York showing the industry growing. It's um, two pages and there's different swatches of cloth. The prices of different uh, of the different cloth made into a suit, and there's the there's the information on I'm sorry Boston's Simmons and Company in Boston, and these are membership cards from the League of American Wheelmen. Shows the consistency, it shows different graphics, and it's just a nice example to show people about. Uh, the league. So, you know, this was an advertising pamphlet published by Pope Columbia, but what it did was it listed some many different, let's see if this works, oops, I'm going to need help, this is not mine, I, I've lost, there's somebody else. There it is, sorry, we did it. Okay, I'm just gonna go fast, so. This is a, an advertising postcard with Queen Victoria. This here is a, this here is an act of, it's the wrong information on the, on the slide. This is an act that allowed any bicycle to use the roads and the parks in New York State. It was the focus of the League of America, you know, <coughs> was to have access, equal access to bicycles. This just shows uh, graphics and the uh, transcripts of, of current problems. So this here is a Bradley catalog for Victor Bicycle Art Nouveau, and it shows the importance of bicycle factories. Here you've got Remington, these are catalogs. Remington, which was a gun catalog, uh, gun factory, sorry, Sterling, which was a watch company making bicycles, and white sewing machine that also made bicycles. And some trade cards. Um, the one on the bottom center is my favorite. It's got guys, no, no. And women and cycling, this is the Boston Sunday Globe. Here's a, just more advertising and a youthful lady. With, and this is a program for the cycle exhibit at the um, New York Colton. <coughs> Madison Square Garden, sorry. And this is patents. This was a cycle patent monthly that was published and they eventually did bound volumes, which is very important. This is lactopectin, 
which is just advertising, but it shows the bicycles and graphics and nice photography. Uh, George and Pierce, Pierce Automobile. This is a dance card for um, and for their employees. The use in um, in sheet music and a scorcher with somebody who goes <coughs> real fast. And there's a seven foot tall poster of Coke manufacturing the bicycle. It's one of my most important pieces. And there's a 4th of July, the last lap. And if you want to shut the lights out, we can do these quickly. Where's the glasses on? This is French, 1869. These, these are called the Diablo series. And I'll just try one, one more time with this and see if it works. Just look for the farthest focal point that you think will be on the picture and then come back to the front of the picture and you'll start to see 3D but a little bit easier. This is a woman, this is Coney Island. <laughs> this is a shaft drive bike, if I can show you. There's no chain there, it's a shaft drive. And she's wearing blue. <laughs> One of them's got one or both of them have cigarettes. In them. <laughs> there, tell them what to do. So she's going with her bicycle. Said, Thanks, everyone. <laughs> yes, sir. I've lost track of the date and place of the first safety bicycle that had pneumatic tires. Okay, I'll give you were in, They used them in racing when they had safety bicycles. In 1888, when Dunlop invented his tires, that's his son, he did it for his son, who was a youth, but that was a safety bicycle. In 1887 or 1880, but he got the patent in 1888. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Yeah. 